Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me. Good, good. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for having me uh, this morning. Sorry, I joined the meeting a little late. I had another meeting going on, so, but I'm glad I was able to make it on time. My name is Wilbur Uma, and uh, I'm going to talk about some of the compute infrastructure that we have at the Ohio Supercomputer Center uh, with an emphasis on how we can leverage this infrastructure for big data analytics using R. Okay, so, um, so this is a brief talk, but just to give you an overview of what I'll be talking about is, uh, first of all, I'll just give you a brief intro introduction of what is Ohio Supercomputer Center, and I will be calling it OSC. And then I will talk about uh, different, uh, an overview of the hardware that we have and how most importantly, we can leverage the HPC clusters that we have at OSC for your R computations. And as I mentioned, especially for your big data analytics. And then lastly, hopefully I'll have time to briefly talk about a web application that we have that is called uh, On Demand. And this web application actually enables users to get access and to easily use HPC uh, clusters at OEC. So a little bit about OEC. Um, Ohio Supercomputer is actually an organization within a consortium that is called Ohio Technology Consortium. And what Ohio Technology Consortium is, it's just a division of the Ohio Department of Higher Education and um, the consortium's main goal is to provide our technology infrastructure. And we have other organizations within OTEC. One of them is called uh, ONET, which is the Ohio Academic Resources Network. And the other one is called Ohio Link, which is the Ohio Library and Information Network. And then the uh, the last organization is OSC, Ohio Supercomputer Center. And uh, what OSC does is, is to provide a uh, resource for primarily all universities in Ohio. And the two main types of resources that we provide are one, high performance computing services. And I'll talk about the type of clusters that we provide. And also computational science expertise, especially in terms of uh, training events at OEC. Apart from providing this resource to universities in Ohio, we also provide this compute resource and also storage resources to commercial clients and also to uh, non-profit organizations around around the country and um, even across across the world and uh, the two main compute clusters that we have at OEC that most people use for their computations are uh, one that is called Owens and another one is called Pizza and Owens compute cluster has about two 824 nodes and you can think of these nodes as a uh, an equivalent to, a node will be an equivalent to a high-end workstation for computation. And each of these high-end workstations are connected uh, by high-speed uh, fiber optic network. And each of these, uh, a group of all these nodes would make a cluster. And we have two main groups of those nodes. One that is called Owens, another one is called Pizza. We have a total number of about 23,000 uh, processor cores on Owens and about, uh, close to 30,000 processor cores on pizza. So these are some of the resources that we have that most people can take advantage of in terms of their big, and big data analytics with R. Our service catalog comprises of uh, different components. As I mentioned, first of all, we provide cluster computing and these are you know, mid-range machines and uh, they, are, they are very fast and they match those that are available at other national labs. We also provide research data storage and this is a high performance, large capacity data storage in the range of petabytes and users can request storage in the range of terabytes uh, for use at OEC. We do have an education component and this education component is mostly uh, geared towards uh, user training, especially how to get started using HPC clusters at OEC. But also we have some domain specific uh, training events, for example, in biological sciences, how to perform uh, RNA-seq or genomics analysis, uh, genome assembly studies, or code optimization, or how to write your code or your R code to take advantage of, uh, uh, for example, uh, 
message passing interface MPI parallelization and acceleration of your R code. So we do provide education in terms of uh, how to op optimize your code too. Another component is web software development. And in web so software development, we aim to design and deploy custom web services that really are gonna help to simplify use of powerful HPC resources. And one of the web uh, applications that I'm going to talk about today is ondemand.oac.edu. And this is just a web portal that enables users to get access to OAC and use HPC clusters uh, easily through the web browser. And lastly, we have a software, scientific software development component. We have a dedicated scientific software development team. And this team is just mainly uh, geared, uh, the main function is to develop and to deploy software that run efficiently on large clusters. And, and some of this software would just be to optimize them in order, in order to take advantage of the parallel processes that can be run on OSC clusters. So our clients uh, are representing different types of fields of study and mainly many of them are coming from natural sciences, about 63% of them. Biological sciences and chemical sciences are the majority of the users at OEC. However, we also have a significant pro proportion of users coming from the engineering and technology field. So I think one of the most important questions we can ask ourselves today is why run your R code? on a HPC, high performance compute cluster. And one of the reasons might be because your simulations or analysis are just taking too long on your workstation or your personal computer and you might wanna try, you might wanna consider using OEC. And the reason for that is because we have uh, uh, more cores that you can use. And actually these cores are quite fast. These are Intel, Intel cores. Um, they have a speed in the range of three gigahertz. So just using one core on OEC would actually really cut down on the wall time that you might be, or you might spend using on your workstation. As I mentioned, you also have opportunity for multi-threading because you can, you know, use multiple cores on a particular node, but also you can have a parallelization in the sense that you can request more than one compute node, uh, and then you can, um, like I'll spread your job, parallelize your job on different nodes using OpenMPI. And specifically for R in this case, uh, you can actually use the R package, RMPI for that particular job. Another way you can speed up your analysis is uh, using GPU acceleration. Now we have a couple of R packages that can do that. And this is so important, especially if you're doing stuff like a uh, um, matrix multiplication, you can speed them up using NVIDIA's uh, CUDA parallel programming framework that we have at OEC and a couple of R packages take advantage of this CUDA like a GPU R package for GPU acceleration. So you can take advantage of that too. And also you can take advantage of distributed computing whereby you, you know just uh, spreading your processes but also you can actually distribute your data across multiple uh, multiple nodes, multiple cores and multiple nodes using frameworks like uh, Apache Spark and using uh, thanks to an R package Spark, uh, Spark LYR that you can use for Apache Spark big data analytics on R. So you can take advantage of that in order to just speed up your simulations. The other reason why you might consider OEC is because you can actually um, use large data sets. So if the size of your data is too large to fit or either to be contained or uh, to be stored on your machine or to be accessed in memory on your computer, you can consider OEC. And the reason is because we actually have large memory nodes and each node uh, range from about 700 GBs to about 300 terabytes of, of memory. And uh, you can also take advantage of distributed computing when you take, uh, you can request more than one node and take advantage of distributed memory across those multiple nodes. And you can take advantage of this using uh, either Spark R or distributed R components. Apart from the memory that comes with the compute node, uh, you can also take advantage of the disk space that is available on the compute node. And this is actually different from the project storage disk space. This is actually the disk space that is associated with, you, with the compute node. And we have nodes that have disk space ranging from one terabytes to 24 terabytes. And also lastly, we have uh, some packages that we maintain at OEC that uh, you, know, you don't have to actually install or compile. We've already done that. Some of them are for MPI uh, parallelization, like our MPI package. Uh, so some people 
have issues installing this because you need to compile and you need a specific version of uh, OpenMPI or a uh, uh, or, uh, or MVAP page to compile. So you don't need to do that because this has already been compiled on OAC. You just need to load this library in R to take advantage of uh, MPI parallelization. Um, I'm gonna take a couple of minutes just to show you as an example of uh, a cluster that we have. And I think let me focus on, on this cluster called pizza. I mentioned that we have two main clusters, Owens and pizza. The structure is quite similar in the sense that you have a component whereby the user is going to log on to the cluster. You can either log on to the cluster using a terminal SSH client, or you can actually open a web portal that is called ondemand.oac.edu. This ondemand.oac.edu can give you access to interactive applications, but you can also actually open a shell terminal on this browser and access compute, uh, compute nodes. However, when you log on to OAC, one of the first things you'll get to is the login nodes. So these login nodes are not for computation. Uh, each node will have about maybe six processor cores, but you wanna use these login nodes, for example, for your, uh, or writing your script, optimizing your code. However, the real power in computation comes in when you use these compute nodes. And you have different types of compute nodes. Most people will just use these standard compute nodes that we have here. Uh, this standard compute node, we have uh, each compute node will have about 48 cores per node. We have other nodes that have about 40 cores but on this pizza system, it's standard 48 cores per node. If you request one node for computation, you'll have about 192 GBs of memory and about one terabytes of local disk space. If you have large data sets that you wanna load onto memory and you feel like maybe this one terabyte is not enough for your use, you can actually use uh, uh, large memory nodes that have uh, uh, more, more memory for RAM. We also have uh, available GPU nodes that you can use for your GPU analytics, about 42 of them that you can request and also for dense GPU nodes that you can request. So I think the idea from this infographics is you have a wide range of of compute clusters or compute nodes that you can use depending on your need. If you just want to perform a standard analysis on R that is gonna take, let's say, 100 GBs of memory per node, you can request a standard node. If you have a lot of data that you want to load onto, onto RAM, for example, you can either request more than one node and uh, perform a distributed computing uh, with, in your, with your data, or you can actually take advantage of the large memory nodes uh, for use. Some of the large memory nodes that we have actually have about three terabytes of memory, so you can take advantage of that. Lastly, in the last two minutes, let me just briefly demonstrate the ondemand.os.edu portal. And this is the portal that most users use in order to access HPC services. And if you just uh, get an account at OEC, and then to get access to the compute resources, you just need to type ondemand.oac.edu and we have interactive apps. If you click here on clusters, you can also have access to the shell terminal. So if you wanna use that, that is fine. But also on the interactive apps, you have access to RCU server and you can actually select which system or which cluster you want to perform your computations on RStudio server. So for example, if you want to run your job or now, sorry, if you want to run your job on pizza, then you just click here on our studio server and then you'll come to this submission form. This submission form just enables you to request resources. You'll specify the cluster that you want, the, part, the version of R, or uh, when you have a project account at OSU, that account at OSC, that account will be associated with a project number. So you just need to specify which project number is that. And you specify the number of hours. And then this is here where you have all the options of different cores, different nodes that you can specify, either 40 core nodes or 48 core nodes, GPU nodes, and also huge uh, and large memory nodes. And also we have a debug node that you can use. And then when you request those resources, uh, your request will be put on a queue. And then once resources are available, you will just be presented by a normal um, R Studio interface for use whereby you can you know, write your code or you have your R console. You also have access to the, to the shell terminal to your R that you can monitor your analysis. You can load your, uh, your Apache Spark in R connections, either local connections. You can actually also connect to a compute node to perform your big data analytics. Um, I'm including here several resources that you can use. The first link is just how to get started at OEC, what are the requirements, or how to create an account. 
Um, we have a how to page that is very detailed on installing software and specifically on installing different R packages and uh, even to take advantage of those packages that are uh, using MPI. And also feel free to send us an email at OEC help or even send me an email if you want to get started if, or if you have any questions about uh, Ohio Supercomputer Center. I think my time is up. Uh, so I will take any questions. Excellent, Wilbur. That was uh, that was an excellent talk. Uh, great introduction to OSC. Um, we we greatly appreciate this resource and and the work that you guys are all doing. Um, I think the, one of the biggest um, questions that rose from this talk was really um, people thinking about the advantages of OSC as a, of you know as a business or even a research uh, institute, like in terms of cost access and comparing it to other uh, available cloud resources such as uh, AWS, GCP, and Azure. Yeah, and actually our services are pretty much subsidized. I haven't included here the, the price sheet, but just to give an example of uh, um, a core hour would be charged on average about 0 0.003 of a dollar per core hour. So that is really, really subsidized. When it comes to uh, when you have an account at OEC, you will have a home storage account, and uh, the home storage will be five uh, GBs of of of, of, uh, of disk space, and that is actually free. You will need to be, to pay for that. If you need uh, more storage, for example, one, two, ten terabytes, you can request for that. And uh, the rates are really competitive for storage. We have uh, you pay about a dollar or a dollar and a half. Uh, per terabyte per month. So that is really, really competitive compared to other services like AWS. If you're associated with uh, an academic an academic institution in Ohio and you have uh, you will have a credit of a thousand dollars that you can use uh, for your computation and uh, that can go a long way into helping you when it comes to, to expenses so you don't have to pay the first a thousand dollars worth of of compute resources if you're associated with uh, an Ohio academic institution for most analysis and especially for those ones in biological scientists a thousand dollars worth of uh, credit would go a long way into most of the analysis, either genome annotation, genome assembly, and all those analyses. If you have a class that you're teaching, then uh, you can also request for a project, a class project account or a workshop account, and those ones are actually fully subsidized. You don't have to pay anything uh, to access that. Yeah, so uh, I think to answer your question, rates are uh, very competitive. Uh, they are uh, way, way cheaper than what you'd find in other commercial HPC uh, companies. Excellent. Um, and I'll just ask one more question and we have about like, you know, 30 to 45 seconds here. Mm -hmm. um, basically, my question is, um, you know, when I was a student, I, uh, you know, tried to run things in parallel a lot and, and I, you know, it's quite difficult to gain that skill. Uh, does OSC offer, uh, you know, any services that actually help people uh, you know, get their code ready to uh, run in parallel and go across, you know, compute nodes. Yep, yep. So we are, uh, so one of the first things that we usually do at the beginning of the year is to have a course uh, code optimization workshop, it's usually around February or March. Uh, most people take advantage of that on how to parallelize your, to write your code so that it can uh, run on different uh, calls, even different uh, uh, nodes or even to accelerate using uh, GPUs and stuff like that. But another way we can, we usually help is to just through office hours. We usually have office hours every other Tuesday. You can always book an appointment with us and uh, you can tell us your issue and uh, we can take a look at your code and see how we can, we can help you. We are privileged in the sense that we have a, a very dynamic team, people from, from different backgrounds, whether in engineering, computer science, biological science, bioinformatics. So they can really help you to optimize your code to run not just different codes but also on different nodes across the cluster yeah awesome wilbur we uh, sure. really appreciate your time um we will send you out the remaining questions and if you have some time please answer them thank All you right. thank you for having uh, me <laughs>